Now let's level up a bit. What if you throw something up and then it come down? Oh, will that be any different? Let's take a look. So here I'm going to throw a ball up. It goes whoop to the top, stops and comes down. Oh, that's a bit fast. Let's go slow more a bit. I want you to pay close attention to where the ball stops moving. Does the ball stop moving? Ah? It go up, 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 up and then come down. No, no. Check very carefully. Where is the maximum height? Where does it stop moving? Okay, let's go round two. It goes up. And did it stop moving? Oh, it stops there. Okay, so this is our maximum height. Draw a line there. Then it starts to come down already. And it's getting down faster, faster. Ah, this part is like the one we look at. Lah. Three, four coming down. Wow, okay. So there are some facts I want to point out to you before we go to the graphs. The first thing is, now you start off at the bottom. Oh, so your initial velocity is upwards. Now, how we, we have to define our things, right? So we define up as positive. You can define other way if you want. Ah. Down as negative. So we don't confuse our signs. So up is not going to be zero anymore. Our initial velocity, because of my hand, no, I throw it up. And then you will have a starting initial velocity. But there's no force from my hand, okay? So initial velocity, this one is the maximum value. It's very fast. Okay, see if I can rewind to there. Hey, give me a moment. Ah, oh, there. Here. Ah, ne. Okay, so the moment it leaves my hand, this ball is considered in free fall if no air resistance ready. Okay, so it goes up, 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 up. Hits the maximum. Oh yeah, I cannot reach. Ah. Very slow. Ah. My hand not fast enough to click. Up, and then hit the maximum point. Hey. Ah, so maximum points now we saw it goes up there, right? So this is where the ball actually stops moving. This is the maximum height. Or maximum point. Lah. At this maximum point, so the turning point, I guess you could say that your velocity is zero. It stops moving because it's going to U-turn and come down. No more energy anymore. Okay, you look carefully again, lah. Last time, okay, I show you. Goes up, stop, come down. Okay, we wait for the slow motion to come out again. Where is the slow motion? All right, watch carefully. This is very important because students always confuse this. You have to stop moving first. Zero. Change direction. And now you're going down. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so we our definition is, we define up as positive. Okay, so this is positive U at the beginning. Then stop moving any law. Okay, then what happens next? You come down. So I use different color. Lah. Okay, come down. Now this sequence is now negative ready because you're going down. And you're getting faster and faster as you come down. Okay, just now I was going up. But getting slower and slower as you go up. Why is that? Ah? Hmm, that's because of acceleration. So no matter where you are in this whole journey, flying up, flying down, your acceleration is still down by 9.81 meter per second square. So if you're going up slower, you're getting slower 9.81 meter per second each second. So every second, you are about like 9.8 slower, 9.8 slower until you get to zero. Then after that, you U-turn. Okay, so go up. U-turn come down, they're getting faster, yes. But faster by 9.81 meter per second each second. That's what acceleration is. Okay, so acceleration, no matter you go up or down, acceleration is still downwards. Downwards. Okay, now let's look at the graphs. How do you plot the graphs of velocity, acceleration, and displacement for something you throw up and come down? Okay, let's start with the velocity graph, like I always say. So here is how it looks like, the yellow line. If you are wondering how we get the yellow line again, uh, here, look at the animation. Object is thrown up. Okay, so you see this object on the left goes up, but getting slower and slower. Alright, so like we said just now, getting slower and slower, but positive. That is why we draw the graph like this. See this part? It's in the positive velocity. So it's going up, moving up, I should say. But it's getting slower because of acceleration that is downwards. So it's decelerating, you could say that. Moving up but getting slower. Then you come to this point where velocity is zero. Ah, where did we say velocity is zero? Maximum height. So this point 
is where velocity is zero, which is where the ball reaches the highest point it can go. This is all if no air resistance. Huh? What happens after that? Okay, let's continue the picture. So after that, the things are coming down faster and faster and then boop, hit the floor again. So here in this part, let's change color. It is moving down. How we know down? You look negative 10, negative 20. So negative means moving down. Now we define that. Mark. And it's getting faster and faster. From 10 become 20. Wow. Okay, so we define up positive, down negative. Usually that's the point. Huh? That's the case. Alright, so remember how to understand this graph. Huh? Okay, and as we mentioned, how does acceleration and displacement relate to this? Acceleration is the gradient. So gradient is acceleration, which is 9.81. Except that now we say, oh, actually down is negative, right? We probably should put a negative 9.81. Negative gradient, you see the slope slant down like that. Okay, so gradient is A, which is also your DVDT, which is gradient, 9.81. Same thing. Okay, so if you see, the gradient is same all the way, because straight line, so 9.81. Okay, and also your displacement, same thing, area under the curve. This part is how far it takes to go up. So go up to a certain height. Hey, show. They got another area when coming down, oh, ne? same area when you're coming down. No? So you go up by that much, you must also come down by that much. Cannot suddenly ghost and then appear somewhere else. Okay, so this area to go up, area to come down in green. Okay, so that's how you can understand your velocity graph. Now, acceleration graph, like we said, okay, you have the same acceleration everywhere in free fall if there's no air resistance. So, if the object start to move up, it's still 9.81. Go down, it's still 9.81. Actually, you should, this one say 10, but it should be 9.81. Okay, so it's just constant all the way, negative, by the way. And that is your acceleration graph. What about displacement graph? Can we take a look at graph here we go okay so this placement graph is a little bit curvy we'll see why in a bit okay so the object as we throw it up give it some initial velocity it goes up reaches a maximum height so somewhere here whatever this height is and then it goes back down so this system they are defined we are defining this zero displacement as the ground so it will go up to some height oh. I don't know what height is this. Okay, call this H. Looks like 10, 11 maybe. Okay, so here you're going up low, coming down. This is like how you see it low, go up, come down, go up, come down. But the question is, why is it curved? Ah? Well, there's this Stuva or kinematics equation called this. S equals to UT plus half AT square. How does this relate to the graph? Ah? Hmm. Okay, well, first if you think about this, this looks like a quadratic shape. So, if we rearrange this a little bit, okay, s equals to ut plus half, acceleration is negative 9.81, right? So we negative 9.81 t squared. And you say, miss, I don't see it. Okay, never mind, I rearrange for you. So in maths, we always say quadratic graphs. y equals to negative, what, 9.1 divided by 2, 4.9, I think. 4.9 t squared plus ut. Okay, so this is basically an upside down quadratic. That's why it's curved. Okay, and you notice the square is the thing that makes this displacement graph curve. But all in all, it's the same. Now, okay, from bottom to top, this is your maximum height that it can go and come down. So learn to draw these three graphs for any kind of scenario. You need to stop and think, oh, displacement where? Oh, displacement up. Oh, positive. So go up, not positive, if you define ground as zero. Okay, so that's how we can draw the three graphs. To summarize, here's another fun simulation we can look at. 
I have my cannonball again and this time we are going to shoot it up vertically. So, something like this. Pa -pam. You see the green arrow? That's the velocity graph. So once again, velocity going up. It's getting smaller, coming down, getting bigger. So something like this. Well, I cannot really see. Uh. Not very clear. Okay, acceleration. Notice the yellow arrow is just the same length all the way. And that's telling us the acceleration is just going to be just downward all the way in if there's no air resistance. Okay, why leh? Because you will see in the next chapter, what is this FG? Hmm, that's gravitational force. We'll learn this more in chapter 4. But we have this uh, gravitational acceleration of 9.81 because there's a gravitational force pulling it down. Ah, now the rest is just showing you all the arrows. Eh, Dila? Okay, so make sure you know to draw the graphs, know the arrows, and how to use graphs to describe motion of some kind of object. So you have looked at how to graph a kinematics graph when you throw a ball upwards and then it comes back down again, two direction. So now it's time to apply the kinematics equations to solve a past year question. Let's read the question together. Uh, this question is from Winter 19, paper 1-2. It says that a ball is thrown vertically upwards from ground level. Okay, sure. Draw diagram. So let's this is ground. I throw a ball vertically upwards. Do I know this initial speed? I don't know. Okay, but never mind. It goes up. So this ball is going to slow down and... That's right. It's going to stop here. Mm -hmm. And when it slows down and stops at the highest position, here to here, we measure upwards. And remember, these things are vectors. Sometimes when we draw them, we tend to draw two-headed arrows. Me too as well. But to be, a bit of, to be a bit aware, to know that this thing is actually a vector, meaning if I start from ground level, here pointing up is my S. Okay, and of course, at this position, this S will be positive 12.7 meter. Okay, now, of course, the ball is not going to float there. It's going to come back down. Duh. So the ball will travel downwards. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little bit like this so it's easy to see. Okay, if not, then the diagrams will overlap. All right, so it's going to eventually fall down to the ground. Okay, okay sure. Assume air resistance is negligible. So if I see air resistance negligible and they never give me any extra value, I think it's safe to assume, because it's not some random planet, that this G is 9.81. But G is 9.81 downwards. What is the total time, T, in which the ball is in the air? So how long would this ball go up and come down? I want to find... The T at this position, zero. Then here is, sorry, not zero. This T is equal to what? When here T is equal to zero. All right. So I'm going to find it's the time taken, way to go up and come down. All right. So the question seems straightforward enough, but before that, I'm going to define the direction. So maybe I'll just follow the convention for this particular question. I will take up as positive, down as negative. So you may be thinking, teacher, teacher, I use Stuva. Can, 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 let's use some Stuva. So let's use S-T-U-V-A. But seeing that I'm taking up as positive, this means your gravity, your acceleration of gravity, oh, is in this direction. Negative, oh, remember G, okay, right here. G is negative. Okay, that's why the ball is slowing down, because ball and acceleration is opposite direction. Okay, let's see. I want to find T. So if I take both the ground level as my initial and final position, so this one is my V. If I take here and here as my initial and final position, I kind of don't really have this. I also don't have this. I mean, this one will be zero, which is great. Zero is my favorite number. And this is 9.81 negative because it's downwards and we are taking the downward direction as negative. This one not very helpful. Uh. Many unknown. In fact, we didn't even touch the 12.7 meter. So we have to readjust. No, not suitable. I, I, I leave it here. I'll just make a note. Uh. Too many unknown. 
set face. All right. So let's do VAR again. Try again. If you don't succeed, try, try again. So let's say now, instead of taking here as a final position, I am going to take here as final position. Okay, so here, I'm going to take this one or label with orange. Huh? Here is my initial. Here is my final. Okay, so I don't know the time, but I know if I can find this time, where the displacement is upwards by 12.7 meter, then I can times two. If it took the time t to go up, it will take the time t to come down, 2t. Okay, so I guess I need to find t. Uh, I don't know my u, but my v is, bless you, my favorite number, zero. Yes. And what is my acceleration? Negative 9.8 what meter per second squared. So here we encounter a second situation. Teacher, um, all four kinematics equation all got U. Rip. Press F in the chat. Press F in the comment. Teacher, like that how? Uh, well, if you need U, where do you go? Bottoms. You find U first. Okay? So there are two steps here. Step one, I need U. I need you guys, I need you. Teachers need students to show up and learn. Then we are motivated to learn. So we're gonna find you. I will use the equation with no T because I will probably need to use the value of U later to find T. So equation with no T would be V square is U square plus two AS. Okay, so my V is zero, my U is I want to know, and then this two negative nine point eight one and my S is twelve point seven. Positive law because it's upwards. Alright. So if that is the case, so this is why, right, the sign is important. Gravity is downwards, displacement is upwards, opposite direction. So they should have opposing sign. That way, when I multiply this, I'll get a negative number and I can square root my u. Okay? So let me move some things around. I will get u square is equal to... So this 2 times 9.81 times 12.7, I will move to the other side. So become positive. 249. So after pressing calculator, the value of my u is, let me see, 15.785. So I'm just going to take 15.8, okay? 15.8 meter per second. Do you know why there's a positive sign here? The positive sign here is to show that the initial velocity direction is upwards. Makes sense, right? Because we're taking the upward direction as positive. Check out the diagram. Okay. So now once we find you, uh, the world is your oyster. La. You can find whatever you want now. Okay. So we'll poke the U here. Positive 15.8 meter per second. So I can find T, right? I'll just use the most straightforward equation. So I'm going to do here. Step two, find T. So I will use V is U plus AT. You can use any equation. Unlock already. Once you have four, everything is unlocked. But you definitely need U, the initial condition, initial speed, to find anything else inside the kinematics top five. Okay? So right now, this is zero. This is positive 15.8 plus negative 9.81 times T. So if you press your calculator, 15.8 divided by 9.81, this will give me 1.61 second. But this 1.61 second, we start here at the ground, we end here at the highest position. Remember, because we took 12.7. So finally, final, final step, step three, I should change color. Final, final step three is I will say hence the 
time of flight or the total time will be 1.61 times 2, which is 3.22 seconds. Okay, if you're wondering why 3.22, it's because you took or we took 1.61 seconds to reach the top height here. So up here, here or here is 1.61. Here all the way to here, 1.61. Okay, and then I can say here all the way down here is another 1.61. So 1.61 to go up, 1.61 to come down. That's right. So this means this t will be 3.22 seconds times 2. Uh, go up, come down. So my answer is B. Here is an alternative way to solve this question. If, let's say, you don't want to use the kinematics equation, you could use graph. Remember, it's a choose-your-own-adventure thing. So let's say I decided I want to use the graph. All right. So in order to do that, first, I need to understand the scenario. So this is the same uh, question that we have discussed in the lecture video. And we have the ball thrown vertical, vertically upwards with a speed u. So maybe like this. Okay. Ball is going to travel up, reach a maximum height, turn back down. I want to find what is the time t here, provided that we start the timing when the ball leaves the head. Okay. The only information given to me was that the maximum height measured from the initial position is 12.7 meter. Okay, so that's the only information that's given to me. But I want to graph this. Okay, and the most useful graph is always the VT graph because it can give me information about the acceleration by gradient and also the displacement or distance traveled by the area under the graph. So this is going to be V and this is going to be T. So if I throw the ball upwards, we are treating up as positive, uh, just to make my life a bit easier, and down as negative. So when I throw the ball upwards, it has a positive u. I don't know la, what the value this is, but it's okay. All right. So I know it's going to decelerate uniformly because the air resistance is negligible. So we'll draw a straight line down like this. Okay. And I know the time is symmetrical. So wherever this t is, this one will be 2t. Whatever this area is, this area, or this area is 12.7 meter. This is also 12.7 meter. You go up 12.7, you come down surely 12.7, right? What sorcery is it that the distance travel up and down is not the same if it's the same ground level? Okay, so now we need to find T. But you know two things. You know area under the graph. Maybe I take the first triangle, area under graph, half ut is equal to the displacement, 12.7 meter. So this one cannot solve because you have two unknown. You don't know your u, you don't know your t. But we can also use gradient. What is gradient again? Gradient would be the uh, acceleration. So acceleration is equal to gradient. Just put equal to A here. So I guess to find acceleration, what I could do is that I would take the y-axis, which is u divided by t. So negative u over t because the gradient is negative and the acceleration is downward. So this is negative 9.81. Two equation, two unknown, can solve or not? I can la miss. From here, I will substitute my u so that I can find my t. u here is uh, 9.81 t. So equation 1, equation 2, what do we do? I am going to sub equation 2 into 1. So 9.5, 9.81 t. So this u is substituted with this to get this one, all right? Another t outside is equal to 12.7. So from here, I can find t, all right? So after pressing my calculator, t is 1.609. So I'll take this one as 1.61. So hence, to return to ground, it's 2t. 
go up is t, come down here is 2t. So hence, 2t would be 3.22. Answer is b. So you decide lah. Do you think graph is easier? Easier to your brain? Do you think that seconds? Do you think that uh, equation, your kinematics equation, this one is easier on your brain? I don't know. I'll leave it to you. You decide. It's a choose your own adventure story. All right, that's it for this example. Please go try more free fall questions because they tend to look pretty straightforward. But sometimes there are little, little tricks that you need to do. Like, for example, maybe it's not on the planet. Or like in this case, you kind of need to find the initial conditions first. All right, that's it for this one. And I'll see you in the next case study where things go boing, 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 boing. Bye.